This is Phil Abadicola, director, producer, and co-writer of Milkshake. Mark Gonzalez, co-writer of Milkshake, checking in right now. I love seeing the uh, this little cut together. This whole sequence is really exciting. And this is really, really exciting to me to see that they are in the Hollywood Hills, driving around the hills. This is another part of L.A. that you don't usually see at night because there's not a lot of lighting there. If you were to shut down... This is Laurel Canyon, correct? Yeah, this is Laurel Canyon. If you were to shut this down, you would probably collapse the U.S. economy. And so just to see these guys driving around at night, it's really exciting to me. And it, I, I love it anytime we see a part of L.A. that I don't usually see. Here we have Lance opening up a case in Drake's car. We see that we have very neatly packed candies. Candies, which is not how you usually pack candy yeah. for some reason. That's weird, yeah. Uh, this this scene for me was a lot of fun. Um, I liked covering this this French over the shoulder where we never see in front of them. Typically, we in episodes one through six, we've always seen in front of them at some point uh, coming down the road. And I just wanted to experiment with being behind them the whole time, which yeah. was a lot of fun and having them cheat. Again, it's a it's a, another way that you haven't seen these guys before, which I think you deserve a lot of credit for for showing their showing this world in different ways every time we see it. I, I know, showing a different side of it every time. I love watching them race down the canyon. I just, it's got so much energy with them turning and them moving, and that's something to keep in mind for people who want to shoot something themselves. Uh, is just trying to find a way of making exteriors dynamic. Uh, it, it's difficult. So the one one of the things that I think that Mark and I wanted to accomplish with the Webison series is making it. A lot of fun and interesting. And so whenever we cut to an exterior, that there's something going on. So either there's traffic passing in front of the camera lens, or we're moving with the camera, mm -hmm. and that's a lot of fun. Uh, now, as we watch this, I have to wonder, and this is a question for you, the viewers. So um, go ahead and email your responses to the website. At what point did you realize we were never going to see? Mel or Sam again. <laughs> um, go ahead and email your response to the Milkshake website, and if uh, well, there is all, all responses will be picked at random, and uh, whoever I pick, I will send five dollars to the charity of your choice. <laughs> there is the there is the slim chance that if the series continues after episode ten, at some point we might meet Sam or Melody again. Yeah. again. Yes, yeah, who knows? But uh, we, we flirt with the idea of the guys going to see the girls again. And I just wonder if at any point somebody said, I don't think we're going to see those chicks again. <laughs> yeah, they talk about they talk about them They're a lot. Always, we hear them a lot. Yeah, they're always about to go see them when a crazy adventure happens. The end goal is never really to sleep with any of these women. It's always yeah. the agitation in order to better themselves, uh, in order to potentially garner a mate or a, a goal or whatever. It's never really important that they... So they do. ...sleep with them or not. It, the same thing goes to say for the milkshake. The, the, if they never find the milkshake, it doesn't matter. So Lance now realizes that Sam has told Melody Jizzmaster, according to, <laughs> <laughs> to Drake's phone. Which, you know, that may or may not be her, her Christian name. It could, yeah. We don't uh, know. Jesus he Christ just could have her named as her Jizzmaster, yeah. And so, uh, so Drake knows that, he, that, she, that she thought it was really sweet. And uh, he's eating these and... This counter little beat is showing you that something's probably not right here. <laughs> right, yeah. So I just want to say, so, so anybody who's deciding whether or not they want to shoot from inside the car, just, God, I can't, I can't say that's enough. This is three, we went down the hill three times to get enough coverage to make the scene from this angle. Then we mm -hmm. went down behind and in front of them. So that's five times down Laurel Canyon. Five times. That's uh, equivalent to a, a, probably a couple of hours of just yeah. coming down, maybe reviewing a little bit of footage, going up, coming back down, and so on and so forth. So, so it took a lot of work. And you can see in this frame here, yeah, there's a lot of steam. <laughs> on those on windows. windows. And, and throughout the entire series, you'll see this, where I, I have to hold the camera up, and it's heavy, and they're turning, and it's... You also, <laughs> for audio reasons, you can't really run the defroster. No, you can't, you can't run any. Or the you AC. You can't open the window. You can't open the AC. 
So, so it gets a bit, it gets a bit foggy in there. Yeah. It's a little scary uh, when it comes to driving down that uh, that hill. So there are five times to make that scene work. That is a good portion of the night. So now we're transitioning to them pulling over. Now, I believe it was while writing this episode, um, several months before the shooting of this episode, that I realized that the series milkshake was Phil and I's milkshake. 